Welcome back guys to another Money Mondays. Today we are going to be looking at a student rental, another student rental. I believe the last video that I did was a student rental. Um, the reason why we're looking at this one is because I had a realtor send me this specific property recently and uh, it's interesting. He's trying to sell it to me so I figured you know what I ran the numbers on it. I want to show you guys how I ran the numbers and how this investment looks. So let's get into it guys. But before we get into it, if you guys are liking this video, please show me, let me know and smash that like button guys. I'm not doing this for you no know, for no reason. I'm doing this for you guys. So please just give me a little bit of feedback, smash that like button and uh, leave me a comment in the comment section below guys if you guys are enjoying this video or if there's anything I, you guys want me to change or you guys want to see differently. Um, and please of course subscribe to the channel it's the least you guys could do if you guys want to continue seeing more real estate investing content. So let's go. So here we go, guys. Um, the address is 518 Randolph Avenue. This is in Windsor, Ontario. Now, if we hop over to Google Maps, what I like to do is check out where the school is. Of course, this is a student rental, so it's very important that the students live close to the school. And uh, here we go, we're looking at a three minute walk. It doesn't get any closer than this, guys, unless you're living in the building. So absolutely, like just tremendous um, opportunity here in terms of having very little vacancy and always having your place rented to students. As long as that school is open, the University of Windsor, and your property is standing, you will have somebody paying you to live in that house. So. That is great news. Now, some of the stats on this property, guys. Um, sorry, let's look at what the property actually looks like. Here it is right here, 518 Randolph. Beautiful two and a half story home. This is perfect, guys. Um, doesn't look like there's much of a driveway. As you can see, there, you know, cars just parking here. So I'm, I'm not too concerned about parking in this uh, specific example because since it's so close to the school, Students usually walk anyways, um, so we don't need ample parking for the students. Now there is obviously a little bit of parking here, so let's say uh, you know one or two cars maybe for the students. Um, let's look at what the street looks like. Okay, it looks like there's street parking, so you know we do have parking here if uh, if some of the students have cars. So you know we're not uh, you know we're still looking okay. Uh, as for this, I like the, you know, trees look good, nice mature trees, no trees on our property, so nothing close to the house, we don't need to worry about uh, anything like that, but uh, it looks like a decent street, guys. One thing, guys, is I did go onto the City of Windsor's website, and I found what their actual property tax was here, so uh, here's a tip for you guys if you're looking if the if the agent doesn't include or the listing doesn't include the property taxes what I'll do is I'll go to the actual city's website basically you just search up on Google the uh, Windsor property taxes it came up here property tax and assessments I scrolled down to the bottom and it said here uh, current year property tax levy and assessment value are available Okay guys, so what you do is you would click on this property tax assessment and it's gonna ask you for the address of the property. So we're gonna go 518 Randolph. Let's, where is Randolph? Randolph Avenue. And then you're gonna search for the property and it pops up right here. You're gonna select it and then you're gonna hit tax assessment because you wanna know how much the taxes were for the year. So it's gonna give us a little bit of information here. We got the legal, the property location, we get the legal description, and we have the total taxes for the year, 25, 23. So now that we have this information, uh, we're gonna hop onto the spreadsheet and break down the numbers. Okay guys, so here we go. Now in the email from the actual realtor, the realtor said that there is currently six bedrooms in this property, but a savvy investor could potentially go into the basement and split a very large bedroom into two, making it seven bedroom home, um, and add a little bit of a kitchenette, like a small kitchen down there for a second unit. So what I did here was on this specific uh, spreadsheet, 
I broke it down into scenario A, which is buying the property as is today as a six bedroom, and then property B as, or sorry, not property B, scenario B as splitting that bedroom, adding the kitchen, and we're gonna see how the two different investments work out, guys. So here we go in scenario A. We'll go side by side, as you can see. The number of units, six, because that's six bedrooms. And we're looking at getting an average of $450 per bedroom. Now, that is up to debate. Some people will try to get more. $450 is a reasonable at market rate rent. So, um, we would be bringing in a total of $2,700 a month on scenario A. A scenario B with seven rooms would be $3,150 a month. So, pretty significant rental increase if we just well, $450 a month rental increase. Um, now, I put in here 3% for vacancy. I think that personally there shouldn't be much vacancy, but it's always good as an investor to plan for the worst case scenario. Um, so, you know, have a contingency fund for vacancy. So every month in that, in that case, on scenario A, we would be putting away $81 a month in our bank account in, in case of vacancy. And in scenario B, 94.50. The reason why it's a little bit higher is because you're taking 3% of 31.50 instead of 3% of 2,700. Now that means that our gross monthly operating income, guys, is 26.19 in number A, and 3,055 dollars in scenario B. Okay, so now that we have how much money our property is going to be bringing in in income, let's jump down into the monthly operating expenses, guys. So property management. What I did here is I actually called a Windsor property management company and I got a quote. Their quote was 8% of the monthly rental income. So what that means is not this number here, guys. The amount of money that you actually bring in which is 2700 or 3150 they're going to want 8% cut of that property or of that monthly rental income. So when I did the math on scenario A, we're talking about 216,000 and scenario B 24450, slightly higher because we're bringing in slightly more money. Repairs and maintenance guys. Now what I typically do on these properties is 5% uh, contingent, I put that in my contingency fund just like the vacancy, uh, calculated the exact same way. So we're looking at 135 bucks, and then on this side, 157. Uh, real estate taxes, this does not change, and I just showed you guys how to actually find the real estate taxes. So you divide that by 12 for your monthly expenses, and you're looking at 21032. Uh, rental property insurance. I did not call to get a quote on this, but from my experience uh, on two other properties that I just recently acquired and got rental property insurance, you're looking at upwards to $150. So let's go on the high side, $150. Rental, uh, what do we got here? Homeowners, uh, association fees, there won't be any of that. And a, res a replace reserve, uh, replacement reserve. Now, I'm already accounting for this in my repair and maintenance. Um, I'm not going to add anything in as well for a replacement reserve. Utilities. So the, the agent told me that the current uh, landlord is operating. He's paying three up to $300 in utilities for hydro and for water. Meaning, and there's a meaning that there's a $300 cap there. So he'll pay up to $300. And in his contract, he says that the tenants, he says to the tenants, the students, that if it exceeds $300, they pay. Now, the only other utility that is not included in, in there is gas. So I added an extra $75 a month for gas, which I think is super conservative. That should be fine. Um, I don't think it should go over $75 meaning that our total monthly utilities for this will be $375 per month. Pest control, I just like to put a little something in there. You're going to have seven, six to seven different people living in this house. You never really know, um, you know, are they going to bring bed bugs into the property? Who knows what these students are going to do? Um, could there be mice? You never know. So you want to have something in there. 
Um, you never want to have zero dollars for pest control. Usually I'll, I'll add it into like my maintenance costs. It comes out of my maintenance, but 25 bucks uh, per month, add that in there. Now accounting illegal, I have $105 a month. The reason why I have this is because um, I'm buying properties in corporations now, all my rental properties. And so since it's in a corporation, I have to pay corporate, uh, I need to pay my accountant fees every single year to do my corporate taxes. So if I divide that down, I'm paying about $105 a month uh, for my accountant. So we're looking at $1,216 in terms of our monthly operating expenses here. Uh, now scenario B is obviously $1,267 a month. As the property value or the, the purchase price of the property is $340,000. That's what the realtor is telling me. So if that's true, guys, we get down to the juicy stuff. As you can see, I'm sitting up, I'm getting excited. Um, that means that with 20% down, that's typically what you need for a rental property. It's going to be a $68,000 investment in terms of down payments. Now, the loan amount is going to be $272,000. That's how much debt you're going to carry on this property. And here's a little switch up for you guys is that for an acquisition cost and loan fees, which is basically like down payment, or not down payment, sorry, that's your closing costs, your lawyer fees, your land transfer tax. Now this varies. You'll see that in a lot of my videos, I like to put $7,500. Um, that is ex definitely on the high side for a property like this. It'd probably more realistically be around 5,000, but I like to be conservative. Um, the the $2,500 there is not going to make or break this deal. So I always like to go on the conservative side of things and, uh, and, and estimate a little bit higher. Now you'll see on scenario B, we're at $27,500. And now the reason for that is because, guys, remember, we need to pay to split the bedroom in the basement into two bedrooms. And we need to add a small kitchen down there. So that stuff isn't free. Um, there isn't a line in here for renovations, but acquisition costs and loan fees, these are not amortized. Like these are not added into your actual costs of, um, your mortgage that you'd be paying every month. These are, um, after expenses. So I like to just throw it in there. I'll tack it in there and I kind of know what it's for. Um, but this specific spreadsheet does not break it down. So 27,500. So we're aiming about 20 grand to put a kitchen down there and split the bedroom. Obviously it could be done cheaper, but I don't live in Windsor. I'm not going to manage it myself. I'm not going to do any of the work myself. So I need to pay somebody to do that. It's going to cost some money guys. So with that being said, we're going to amortize or the amortization schedule, which means the length of our mortgage is going to be 30 years. We're going to stretch that out as long as possible to get our monthly mortgage payment as small as possible. Um, we're looking at an annual interest rate on this, uh, on this mortgage of three, 3.19. Now that's typically what I'm looking at right now, uh, in terms of, or sorry, for investment properties. Primary residence is cheaper, but yeah, 3.19. So our total investment in scenario A is 75,500, and our total investment for scenario B, including the kitchen and splitting the bedroom, is $95,500. So a little bit more of an investment here, but we're gonna see how this breaks down. Our monthly mortgage payment does not change, guys. $1,174. The So look at this. Our annual interest on this property is $8,500. Now, we're not too concerned about the annual interest that we're paying. Um, we could be as the tenants are paying it. We more so want to know how much the tenants are paying down in, pro in principle, the mortgage pay down. So in the first year, guys, they will be paying down $5,500. That's pretty good. That's on top of the cash flow that we're getting. So the total annual debt service is $14,097 on both sides. So the juicy part, guys, total monthly cash flow before taxes, we're looking at 
$227 for scenario A and a whopping $613 for scenario B. That's pretty impressive, guys. Like for scenario B, for the extra 20% or sorry, $20,000 investment, you are you're getting, you know, a big monthly cash flow by adding that bet adding that extra bedroom down there. But what does that mean in terms of cash on cash return or our return on investment? In scenario A, we're looking at 3.62% and in scenario B, we're looking at 7.71%. So we're literally doubling our return on investment by adding that $20,000 investment in there, guys. Um, so to me, if I were to buy this property, it makes a lot more sense to invest the extra 20 grand to double your return on investment and get that large monthly cash flow. So now that we've broken down everything, would I buy this property? The answer is no. Um, and the reason why is because the return on investment simply isn't high enough for me, for me to sink anywhere from 75,000 to 95,000 into it. Um, not that the return on investment on scenario B is bad, like it's, it's a decent cash on cash return and I like the monthly cash flow, but this is all the way in Windsor. Um, I can get the same, if not better of a return on investment in my own city where the appreciation is way greater. Um, and it's just a way better market to be investing in, in terms of fundamentals, um, like market fundamentals and uh, yeah, so and, and I mean I could get I can get this type of return on investment for a, a straight single family rental or even a duplex or triplex rental um, Which would be a lot less management and a lot less turnover compared to a student rental um, And a lot less wear and tear as well So that being said guys, I would not buy this property. So there you have it. There is my breakdown on another student rental property for you guys. If you guys like this type of video, please smash that like button, show some love and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It keeps me going guys, me putting out information like this for you. Um, thank you so much for watching. Until next Money Monday, take care and we'll see you guys next time.